Have you ever used Copilot and thought, wow, this feels like magic? You type a few words, maybe a simple instruction, and suddenly, bam, a bold document, a polished presentation, or a detailed analysis appears on your screen. It almost feels like Copilot is reading your mind at times, right? But here's the truth. It's not magic. It's engineering. Behind that simple prompt is an incredible orchestration of systems, data, and AI models working together in milliseconds. And today, I'm going to pull back the curtain and show you exactly how it all works. We'll explore what happens the moment you hit enter, how your data stays secure, and why Copilot feels so natural. Yet it's powered by some of the most advanced technology on the planet. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand the architecture behind Copilot, but you'll also see why it's changing the way we work forever. So let's dive in and uncover the real magic behind Microsoft 365 Copilot. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Harris, and I am a senior Copilot Cloud Solution Architect with Microsoft. Welcome to the Microsoft 365 Copilot Connection, where we provide you the latest updates, use cases, and knowledge information in relation to Microsoft 365 Copilot experiences. As of today's video, we want to talk about the Microsoft 365 Copilot architecture. I want to take the overall architecture and make it easily understandable to each and every one of you, whether you're an IT administrator, or a regular business end user, or just someone that's generally interested in understanding how AI experiences work and function. So let's talk about the key components, let's talk about the data flow, and how that magic of AI works directly in Copilot. As you can see here on my screen, there are some core components that make up the overall architecture of how Copilot works and functions. Of course, there's you and the device experience that you use, whether that be your mobile device or your PC or a laptop or tablet. Copilot works across many different device experiences. There's also the ability to access Copilot via a wide variety of applications, whether you are licensed or unlicensed, specifically the main web browser or a dedicated desktop application. And with licensed capabilities, the ability to access Copilot in Word and PowerPoint, Excel, so on and so forth, to access the latest and greatest in terms of AI functionality. Now, working in those particular experiences are outside the bounds of what we call the Microsoft 365 Service Trust Boundary. Within this particular boundary is where all of your data is safe and secure within Azure Data Center infrastructure, along with the particular processing services that we leverage. Azure OpenAI services hosted in Azure data centers as well that process all of that information that Copilot ingests. As you see, the very large box within this particular picture, we have the Microsoft Graph. The Microsoft Graph is the core area where you have all of your rich enterprise data stored in Microsoft 365. This includes files, it includes emails, it includes Teams data for your chats and your meetings. All of that rich organization knowledge that makes up your organization is centrally stored in the graph. The way I like to define this out is you can think of the graph as your own internal organization library. And Copilot, as your AI assistant, is your librarian, where you provide the librarian a set of instructions, what you need or want within your work data, or even web data as well. We'll get to that here in just a bit. And have that librarian give you information back based on your requirements and your access. Now let's switch over into the actual data flow. So here's a high level review of how data flows from your initial prompt all the way back to the response that Copilot provides. Of course, everything with Copilot these days starts with the prompt, that natural language query or set of instructions that you provide the AI assistant to do some form of work for you. That particular prompt is submitted via that app experience, whether you're in Edge or the dedicated desktop application or applications like Word or PowerPoint. Now, once your prompt is submitted, the orchestrator, which is directly represented as Microsoft 365 Copilot in this architecture diagram, identifies exactly what it should do. Should it go and find data out on the public web? Should it ground in data in the Microsoft graph? your rich work data set? How exactly should it aggregate and combine and leverage that data and information to then send all of those details over to the Azure OpenAI services? All of this is done by that orchestration engine. 
So based on that user intent within the prompt, it will combine all of that material for you. Now, as that information is being combined, we build what is called a meta prompt. The meta prompt is the entirety of information that we send to the large language model in our Azure OpenAI services. You might initially think that we're really only sending your prompt to be processed by the large language model, and that's not quite the case. Your prompt is submitted, however, there's a lot of additional data and detail that's submitted as well. For example, if the orchestrator identifies a few documents directly in the Microsoft Graph, it will include that information directly in the meta prompt. So there's a lot more happening behind the scenes prior to the actual large language model processing any of your data. Now, once that meta prompt is directly built, all of the information is sent over to the Azure OpenAI services, the large language models that we directly use in Copilot, and it's processed. I like to think of the Azure OpenAI services like the brain of the operation. It's that AI that's looking and sifting through all of that rich information and combining all of it into an appropriate response for us. However, there are some checks and balances that take place prior to the actual response being sent back to you, the user. Within Microsoft 365 Copilot experiences, we have security and compliance-based controls, as well as responsible AI built into this platform. And what that means is there are checks and balances that we review prior to the AI giving you data back that could be confidential in nature or maybe hit some form of privacy or content safety control. If any of you have ever had an experience where Copilot might initially be providing you some form of output and then stops and indicates something went wrong or it can't provide you uh, that particular output response at that current time, it could be that those content safety and responsible AI controls have overwritten that particular response because it's possible that the LLM responds in some form of inappropriate way. So we incorporate these checks and balances to ensure that the overall safety and privacy as well as data security is all in place prior to giving you some form of informed result back. Now, once all of those checks and balances are finished, it then directly responds back to the user. Now, of course, in your experience, you don't really see any of this happening. All of this is happening in real time, and vast majority of Copilot experiences, you're getting responses within 5 to 10 seconds. And now you know that there's a lot more behind the scenes. Now, of course, there's even more technical material that's included here, so I'm switching to more of our technical diagram to show you all the bells and whistles. And there's particular areas that I want to focus on here. First and foremost, that process that I just defined, this is how we get around actually training the large language models on your business data. All of our enterprise customers want to understand what happens with their data. Is it used to train the models? And no, it's not. That's not the case. We send that data over to the large language model for processing in real time but your data is never used to train the large language models inherently. Also, what happens if you extend Copilot? And what I mean by that is giving Copilot access to additional data sources that are outside the bounds of Microsoft 365. That could be data sources for the public web. It could be data sources for third-party systems that your organization leverages, like ServiceNow or Jira. Many of my customers ask me today, if I go to Copilot and I search the public web, is my entire prompt and possibly any confidential data I include being sent out to the public facing web? And the answer is no, that does not happen. When you are searching the public web with Copilot, we have prompt filtering that's in place. Your prompts are automatically filtered down as showcased here where you can directly see what are those key search terms that Copilot is leveraging to go out to Microsoft Bing and the search services to then pull data back from the public web into the service trust boundary. So no confidential information for your organization is ever leaked out of that service trust boundary. This is all included within the direct data protections that we make called enterprise data protection. So this is great for any organization and user that is really focused on security 
wanting to understand, hey, what happens with my actual work data? It is all safe and secured. It's never leveraged to train the large language model, and it never goes outside of that service trust boundary. And what about extension capabilities? What happens if we add a data connector and it goes to a third-party service? Those data connectors will automatically take data from the third-party service and pull it directly into the Microsoft Graph. This is all administrator controlled. Along with that data connection, access control lists or user permissions are automatically inherited. So that way, if you as a user have access to data in those third-party services, you could prompt Copilot and you could say, hey, uh, can you go and get this ServiceNow ticket for me? And it could pull back information from ServiceNow because it's in the graph and then give it back to you in Copilot responses. If I'm a user that does not have access to that information, I would never be able to find it directly in Copilot output. Now, for any of you that are interested in all of the security mechanisms and technical documentation, I will have materials linked in the description below for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this content and you found it useful and informative, please feel free to like and use the new hype functionality. It's sort of cool we have some new ways to support small creators like myself. Share this content with your peers, subscribe if you are not already, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, everyone.